In this second podcast of this introductory series, we'll be looking at loop invariance, or how to prove that your algorithm is correct by showing that something is true every time a loop executes and when it's done. Before we get started, uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using some images, photographs I've taken in Hawaii for these podcasts. This particular one is taken from Mauna Kea, looking towards Mauna Loa, and it represents the big picture we are getting in this particular podcast of analysis of algorithms. Okay, how do we prove that insertion sort is correct? We're going to use loop invariance. A loop invariant is a formal property that is claimed to be true at the start of each iteration of a loop. We can use the loop invariant to prove the correctness of the iteration and program by proving three things about the loop invariant. Here they are. The loop invariant will be a desired property that if it's true when the loop ends, then the algorithm has done the right thing. We first show that the invariant is true prior to the first iteration. Then we show that if it's true prior to a, any given iteration, then it remains true before the next iteration. In other words, each pass through the loop maintains that condition. And when the, we show that when the loop terminates, the invariant and the conditions of termination give us a useful property that helps show that the algorithm is correct. Notice the similarity to mathematical induction, although this does not go off to infinity. It has a base case, the initialization, and then we show that if one domino falls, the next domino falls, that's the maintenance. But unlike mathematical induction, we stop at a finite number of loop um, iterations. So let's look at this uh, in terms of the uh, insertion sort algorithm that we've been discussing here. What is the loop invariant that we want for insertion sort? Well, we want it to be sorted at the end. So we're going to ask what part of the ray is sorted each iteration through the loop. Well, okay, so the, we want to say that each iteration, there's some portion of the array that is sorted. So the loop invariant for insertion sort will be that the subarray from the beginning to some position, and I'm going to say j minus 1, uh, is the elements from the original array of that range, but now they are in sorted order. So let's say r sorted. And we're saying j minus 1 because notice that the loop starts with j equals 2. Uh, so the loop invariant, clearly, it, at initialization here, is true prior to the first iteration, because prior to the first iteration, we're just saying that the, the array consisting of 2 minus 1, 1 to 2 minus 1, or just one element is sorted. That's always true. One element is always sorted. So we just, I've just specified that the initialization is, um, is good. Let's check that off. I've said it verbally. I won't write it out. You can see that in the web notes. Now let's look at the maintenance. The maintenance of the loop invariant. Here we have to show that if it's true prior to a given iteration, that it remains true before the next iteration. Now a precise loop invariant analysis of this would require that we write another loop invariant for this while loop, because there's another loop there. But here, in the interest of not getting bogged down into great detail, we'll just note more informally that at each iteration of this while loop, it's starting at i as j minus 1, and it's decremating i. So the elements at j minus 1, and then j minus 2, j minus 3, and so on, are shifted to the right. This is the shifting to the right. If, if it's too big, we move it to the right. And that continues until the key is greater than the item we're looking at. So the key is always inserted in the correct position. And so when this loop executes, we now have the subarray with one more element added is correctly sorted. So that is at the, at the next iteration, uh, the um, items from 1 to j will be sorted. Finally, we need the termination. We need to show that when the outer loop ends, the loop invariant is still true. Well, when the outer loop ends, uh, j is going to be n plus 1, because 
j runs up to a dot length, and that will be n, but there's the last time through the loop where it tests it uh, when j is actually greater than a dot length. In other words, uh, j is actually n plus 1 when that executes. That's when we want to test, okay, at the exit, is everything okay? And so j will be n plus 1 at that point, and so we are dealing with the array um, a, 1, n. And since the loop invariant has been maintained, this property that this is sorted now holds. Because I've substituted for this j minus 1 here, the fact that j is now n plus 1, so n plus 1 minus 1 is n. So that proves, using a loop invariant, that the insertion sort is correct. One of your uh, problem assignments will be to do a similar proof for a linear search procedure. Okay, that's all for this brief podcast on loop invariants, proving an algorithm correct with loop invariants. In the next podcast, we're going to look at detailed analysis of the time complexity of the insertion sort.